Hey everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to work on actually starting to set up our image targets inside of Unity. So right now I'm on the EasyAR documentation website and this is just going to have some information about the planner image tracking. So first of all what I think is most important is getting an understanding of what sort of image targets you should have. Uh, and over here it'll give you a bunch of examples of what you should do and what you should not do. First of all, on the left here, you'll see that this image has uh, rich textures, whereas the one on the right is fairly simple. Then down here, it says that textures should not repeat in uh, patterns, and that is good just because when it's identifying it, it needs to find unique elements of the image target so it can know its position, scale, orientation, things like that. Uh, you also want to be filling up as much of the object as possible, so having uh, quite a big margin isn't that good and also maintaining a image that is rather square or rectangular. You don't really want a long image like this as your image target uh, as it really tries to track much more square objects. So yeah, this website here also goes over a bunch of other stuff. It goes over how to set it up uh, and you can also download some of the sample projects for Unity right here. Uh, we're not going to be going through that. Actually, we're going to be hopping back into our project right now and beginning to set up our project so it can actually start to work with the image targets. So the first thing we need to do is go to the Easy AR folder right here, open that up. Then we want to go to Prefabs and you'll see that we have Composites folder right here and a Primitives folder right here. Now these two are, are basically a bunch of pre-built prefabs that we can just drag and drop into our project so that we don't have to create each component, each uh, object, and put them all together. Um, and since we are working on image targets, we can go to Composites right here. And I'm going to zoom out a bit on this. And we want to find the EasyAR Image Tracker component right here. Let's drag this into the scene. And you'll see that when it's in the scene, uh, there's no real 3D object that's representing it. It's just a bunch of empty objects. But if we open this object up here in the hierarchy, you'll see that there is a number of different objects that are a child of it. We have the first main EasyAR image tracker object. Then we have a render camera object, a video camera device object, and an image tracker device object as well. Um, first of all, if we look at the Im Easy AR image tracker, this is the main object that is going to be running the AR in our Unity game. We have the Easy AR, AR control component and the AR session component as well. And these two are pretty much going to be running the entire thing. Then the render camera, this manages, of course, rendering what our camera sees uh, onto our screen and rendering the objects in the world uh, on top of that camera so that it appears as if our 3D objects are really in the world. Uh, all we need to do here, um, actually we don't really need to change anything here. We can, if we want, drag the main camera into the target camera field here, although that does do it automatically when we start the game. Uh, on the video camera device, this just contains a bunch of information um, about how we want to set up our camera. We can choose the camera size, the focus mode. I recommend just keeping this on continuous auto as you don't really want this at any sort of fixed um, focal length. Then we have some other stuff such as the camera type. So you can choose this to be the front camera or the back camera and some other preferences right here. Since we are doing object tracking, we can just keep it on this right here. Now over on the image tracker component, this is what manages uh, many of the image targets. Right now we have the tracker mode on prefer quality over prefer performance, so we can just keep it on that for now, and simultaneous image uh, target number. So this is the amount of image targets that can be rendered on screen at once, that can be tracked on screen at once. Right now by default it is on one, but we have four image targets that we want to be tracking at one time, so let's actually change this number over to four. Save that. And yep, yeah, that's pretty much this sort of setup prefab right here, which is in our project and ready to go. Now what we can do is start to create an image target. So I'm going to go back to the Easy AR folder here, inside prefabs. Now I'm going to go to primitives, and what I want to find is the image target prefab right here. I'm going to drag and drop that into the scene, and if I press F to focus on it, We'll zoom out a bit, but let's just zoom into that right now. And you'll see that there is an image on screen with a question mark. And this is because on the right hand side in the inspector, uh, you'll see that there is an image target controller component. And this manages the image target. It manages what image target we're looking for and some other stuff on how it is rendered. Uh, most important thing we want to look at though is the image file source. So let's click on that. 
and you'll see that it'll open up with a bunch of information. Uh, first of all, the path type, this is going to choose where it's looking for the image target. Since we did put our image targets in the uh, streaming assets folder, then we do want to make sure that the path type is on streaming assets. And then there are three more things. We have path, the name, and the scale. The path is the path to the image inside of the streaming assets folder. So if we actually go over there to streaming assets, you'll see that we have marker 1, marker 2, marker 3, and marker 4. So for the path here, let's enter in marker one dot jpeg because it's in no subfolders so we don't need to put that at all and as you can see in the scene it has suddenly changed sh to show this new image target here it's showing the marker one so we know which one it is and then we can also with our game objects on top of this sort of um, know a reference on how large it will be in the real world the, the name over here is just the name of the file so we can just enter in a marker one we don't have to add in the file extension and scale right now is set at 0.1. Uh, to make this a bit easier to work with inside of Unity, let's actually increase this size to 1, like so. Uh, the reason it is on 0.1 is because if you are wanting to work with physics, it's good to maintain that one Unity unit to one real-world meter sort of reference. And since these image targets are quite small, having the scale at around 0.1 uh, sort of scales it to the right size, but we, we aren't using any sort of physics or anything like that So scaling it up to one will allow us to just work a lot easier inside of unity Okay, so we've got an image target right here. How do we render something on top of it? Well, that's fairly straightforward All we need to do is add whatever sort of object we want to render as a child of this image target So let's right click on image target here. I'm going to go 3d object cube uh, we can set the scale to maybe 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5 and you'll see that we can then drag it up here and pretty much whatever is on this side of the image right here is what is going to be rendered uh, on top of the image target. So make sure this cube is a child of the image target so if we disable it the cube will disappear. Now one thing we need to do before we actually build this to our device and test it out is change the camera. If we look in the game view right now you'll see that we have the default Unity camera but what we need to do is change a few things on our main camera here. First of all, let's change clear flags from skybox to solid color and we can just make the color here black for now. Uh, and after this we need to change the rendering path to be forward rendering as that is what's required by EasyAR. And apart from that, everything should be set up and ready to go. So we can plug in our device and build it uh, to it so we can test it out and see how it works. So here we go. If we move our phone around the image target, you'll see that the uh, object appears, but it does appear below the uh, image target, which is something we're going to be addressing right now. Now, one thing that did look a bit weird was the fact that this cube looked like it was underneath the image target. And to fix that, we just have to move this cube over into the negative z-axis. That is because uh, the positive z-axis of this image target here is facing towards the ground, and the negative is what points upwards. So everything that you want to appear should be um, over on this side of the image target. And yeah, that is the image target set up and ready to go. In the next lesson, we are going to begin to start and actually set up multiple of these targets and make it so that these targets can actually have their model on top and begin to be able to interact with each other. So I'll see you all then in the next lesson.